So after our in-depth discussion of basic addition and looking into a ripple carry adder and different things like a mirror adder and how to size them and so forth for bit slice design, um, let's go over and see how to make faster adders than that um, ripple carry adder, which is pretty bad and pretty basic. So the first uh, idea is what we call a carry skip or a carry bypass adder. Okay, and in this case, um, we see something very interesting here. What we do here is if this is a ripple carry adder um, that we have over here, right? Um, what we're gonna do now, instead of just take the ripple carry adder and wait until the carry gets to the end, we're gonna have a multiplexer at the, uh, at the end of it over here that's gonna say, okay, look, if everything over here was actually a propagate, then what we should have done is propagate the initial carry in to the output of this block of, in this case, four bits. Okay, um, now why is that good? Well, it's not really good. It means that in order to get over here, if the, for the carry over here to be um, part of the carry over here, we had to have everything be propagated over here. If this was generate, then we're gonna get a shorter path, right? If this was generate, we're gonna get a shorter path. And, and uh, if this was generate, we're gonna get a shorter path. If this was generate, we're gonna get a shorter path. The only time we care about the actual propagation of carry in zero all the way to the end is if this, this, this and this were all propagate, okay? And in that case, we could have just brought it over into the multiplexer here and taken all the and of all those four propagates. Again, that doesn't really help us because it's gonna pretty much take the same amount of time to go through you know, uh, uh, all these pro propagates and uh, uh, the same thing as if we had just a generate that came from here and got to the end. That in itself doesn't help us. However, if we take something larger, like say, for example, a 16-bit type of an adder where we have um, sections that are four bits, then it does help us. And why does it help us? Well, um, this part over here of the setup, this propagation through three of these uh, of these gener of these guys, is actually done in parallel between when it happens over here on the first one, which we just explained over here, the setup stage. It's this this type of uh, generation, and then deciding if we want to take you know carry one in zero or. The, the thing that propagated and had the long TPD over here, or just taking the propagate that went directly in through, um, through the multiplexer, that's gonna take the same amount of time in the first stage. But in the second stage, this whole type of uh, uh, long propagation, it happened the same time here, 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 and here all together. So basically what we do here is we have um, at the, at the point that this goes through this, uh, you know, all of this setup and gets to the mux and takes this long, um, generate from the first full adder and through the other three full adders, right? Um, it gets to the next stage. That has already been done. And so if, uh, so the worst case is actually going through the propagate and going through the propagate and going through the propagate. If um, there wasn't a propagate on one of them, then we would have just gone through here, you know, into the end. So that really, um, being able to parallelize this type of uh, the worst case pattern, which is the pattern that goes through three full adders, but do it at the same time down uh, downstream in the, in the adder actually lets us get a, a large um, speed up. So if we have M sections all together, where each section is N over M bits, what we get is that we have, you know, um, something like uh, an O of N over M um, T carries and M T bypasses to, uh, to, to do this. And that's much faster than a ripple carry adder. It's something like O of N over M. And we can see here that when N gets big, um, where a ripple carry adder has this linear, you know, um, increase in the, uh, TPD that goes with a, with a large, uh, slope, the bypass adder has a much sl smaller slope. And so we get a, a large speed up when we have a relatively large N. So that that's one way to do it, which is, um, kind of, manipulating the fact that we can do things in parallel while we're waiting for the initial propagations. A very similar, um, almost uh, the same, but with a different approach type of uh, uh, way to do it is what we call a carry select adder. And here we, again, do this type of a setup thing where we say, listen, um, you know, we have two options of doing this type of carry propagation. Either the carry in was a zero or the carry in is a one. So let's add redundant hardware. We'll both figure out what would have happened if our input was zero and what would have happened if our, if our input was one. Then take that input right, the actual carry in and select, did we get carry zero or did we get carry one? And that will go out into our, uh, and that will go out into our carry out. Uh, again, 
This type of a thing is no better than our regular ripple carry adder, but we can do it on a small type of a section. Okay, so we can again take our 16-bit adder here and do that with sections of four. So it took us a long time, again, to the setup creates the propagates and the generates, and then we assumed that our carry in here was zero, constant zero. We assumed our carry in was a constant one over here. We calculated the uh, carry out um, if our carry in was zero. We calculated the carry out if our carry in was one. And taking the actual carry in, we uh, selected which one was correct with this multiplexer and took the carry out. So that took the same amount of time, even probably a bit more time than a standard ripple carry adder. But this whole part was done at the same time in parallel on all of these. So we're actually waiting with the answers down here just for this carry in to select the multiplexer. And then all that we have to do is go through a small TPD of a multiplexer once uh, we get over here to provide the answer. And that again is a very similar to the, um, the previous uh, adder. We get, if we have n bit inputs with m um, carry select adder blocks, we're again gonna have this O of n over m over here, which is gonna be very similar to what we saw um, in, in the previous in the carry skip adder. Okay, so that's really cool, but we can even make it better than that. How? We can do what we call a square root carry select. So. Um, Again, this first part took a long time, right? We had to go, we had to do the P's and G's over here. We had to, using the P's and G's and assuming our carry in was one, figure out the answer for zero, figure out the answer for one, and then um, using the actual carry in, select either this input or this input. So our propagation delay, you know, was worst case through these two until it got over to here. And that took a long time. And during that time, basically, all of these guys could have done whatever they wanted. Well, if we do something simple, like only take two bits to do this, then this will happen a lot faster. And during that time and going through the multiplexer, we have a bit more time where we can actually take three bits over here. So we can do a three bit type of a, uh, uh, of a uh, you know, a, a carry select type of a thing over here. And um, that'll happen by the time, you know, our, our um, decision gets over here, our carry out gets over here to this multiplexer. And then that took a much longer time. So we can take four bits over here, five bits over here, et cetera, et cetera. And really we can, um, th by, by kind of uh, tapering it and, and getting larger and larger areas of, uh, uh, or, or sections of, of, uh, of bit calculation down the line, because it's going to take a while until, you know, uh, this gets over here. So we can do a much um, slower type of a calculation over here, we can make this faster. And if we were to um, go and figure out what it takes, we see that there's a square root of n inside the, um, the propagation delay, and therefore we get some sort of a um, O shell square root of n, and that is why we call it a, a square root carry select. And again, if we look at the kind of complexity of all these things, we have our ripple carry adder, which has this large linear you know, propagation delay that rises as we make n bigger. And then we have our um, two linear select, which are the carry select and carry skip, that have a, uh, a slower slope, but the, uh, the square root select has like a square root type of a, uh, of a, of a functionality, and that's really a much better um, way to do it. So those are um, fast, simple, I would call them adders, but they're not the fastest we can do. Can we do faster? And the answer is, for most of these arithmetic things, we can find out that we can do a log two of n, which is really faster than anything we've seen uh, over here. And um, the one that achieves that is called a carry look ahead adder. It can be called a tree adder um, in, some, in, in some implementations of it. And, and it's a concept or an idea that has many different implementations that we'll see a, a couple of them in a few minutes. Okay, so the problem is that our carry out of a certain stage k, it takes approximately k gates to ripple all the way down to there. And the question is, can we calculate the carry without any ripple? Because we saw this ripple is a real thorn in the side. Okay, so let's just remember that the generate of stage i is ai times bi, and the propagate of stage i is ai xor bi. Okay, so um, if we want to write down what the c out, what the carry out of stage k is, it is going to be a function of the input bits of, uh, of k, that's a k and b k, and of the c out of the previous stage, so that's c out of k minus 1. And we saw in a, our first slide in this lecture that we can write that as generate of stage k. So if a k and b k are 1, we automatically get a generate and um, the carry out of k is immediate. Or if not, then um, what we do is we have a propagate times the carry out of the previous stage. 
So we either have a generate or uh, a kill will kill it, and it doesn't really matter, um, or a propagate uh, uh, times c out of k minus 1. So that was just kind of like our definition. That's how we rewrote the um, equation of carry out initially. And it was a kind of a simple thing to do. Okay, now, but now, since we wrote it like that, we can go and rewrite what, um, uh, basically, we can rewrite what c out of k minus 1 is using this same, um, uh, this same uh, way of writing it. So c out of k is the generate of k plus the propagate of k times c out of k minus 1. C out of k minus 1, we can stick it back into here. That's the generate of k minus 1 plus the propagate of k minus 1 times the c out of k minus 2. And we can continue doing that, right, and, and iteratively or recursively until we get, you know, gk plus pk of gk uh, times gk minus 1 plus pk minus 1 times blah, 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 until finally we have here um, c in 0. And c in 0, we know c in 0 is, um, is ready at time step zero. It's usually going to be a zero if we have a subtract, it can be a one, but it's available at time step zero at the same time that a, k, and b, k are ready. So we basically wrote a very large equation that shows the uh, answer of what c out of stage k is without actually having to wait for the carry of, you know, uh, uh, of the carry that had to ripple all the way through. The only problem here is that this is a large logic block, and so it's not going to be um, very short and ready at stage zero, but this is the basic concept. Can we use these generates and propagates to, um, to, use, to do our calculation immediately? Um, in fact, if we look at it, we have this kind of a, uh, a triangle type of a thing here, which shows the complexity of figuring out the sum and the carry of e each, uh, uh, or actually the sum, I guess, uh, of each type of one of these uh, um, bits. And so with A0, B0, immediately we get P0. And using C uh, in 0, we get the sum um, very, very fast. With A1 and B1, the logic to do it is a bit uh, larger. We get the propagate of 1, the carry in of 1, and we get the sum of the second one. The logic to do it on a bit n uh, minus 1 is already pretty big. So the logic really grows here in, in a large way, but it is still um, lets us do it uh, much more efficiently. Um, we can also make gates, um, CMOS type or similar to CMOS type gate that really do this propagate and generate for four bits. Uh, the problem is we get a lot of uh, transistors in series here, which we don't like to do. It makes things very slow, but there are these different concepts that have been made. Okay, so that's the basic idea of how to make uh, carry look ahead adders. And you, the usual implementation of it is making a logarithmic uh, carry look ahead adder, which is called a tree adder often. Okay, so we want to reduce the complexity of calculating these uh, propagates and, and generates. And let's see how we can do it. And again, we have our equations over here on the side. Generate is A, uh, B, A, A, I, B, I. Propagate is A, I, X, or B, I. The sum is P, uh, the propagate um, soared with the C in. And the carry out is the generate plus the propagate uh, times the C in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can make little blocks of propagate and generate. So let's define this thing called the propagate of 1 to 0. And we're going to define it as the propagate of 1 times the propagate of 0. We're going to also define the generate of 1 to 0. And we're going to define that as the generate of 1 plus the propagate of 1 times the generate of 0. So what does that mean essentially? If stage 0 generated a carry, okay, then, uh, if stage one propagate, uh, generated a carry, of course, the output of our block is going to be uh, one. The C out of the block is going to be one. If not, and we have a propagate in stage one, then if, if stage zero generated a carry, it's going to be propagated out. Okay, so this is kind of a um, generalization of how we can say we take two bits and define a generate and a propagate that um, implements the, the two bits. Okay, so the C out of stage of, 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 of bit one, the second bit in our thing is going to be the generate one zero plus the propagate of one zero plus the carry in of zero. Okay, now that's interesting. So again, it, if we get a generate, um, uh, if we get a generate one zero, so we got to generate because of the two bits, then it's obviously the C out's going to be one. Or if both of them were a propagate, then we should take C with C in zero and 
and dump them out. Similarly, we can define any two bits. So propagate three of two is propagate three times propagate two. Generate three two is generate three plus propagate three times uh, generate two. And then the C out of three is going to be uh, uh, generate of three two plus propagate three two plus carry in of two. So why does that help us? Okay, because then we can actually stack these together and define a larger type of a block. So here's a block of four bits. Propagate of 3 to 0 is going to be propagate of 3 to 2 times propagate 1 to 0. So very similar to this is just a generalization of it using blocks instead of using single bits. Okay, same with generate 3 to 0 being, you know, a stack of two, um, uh, of two, two blocks of generate uh, and propagate. Okay, and that means that C out of 3, what we get basically at the output over here, which required C in 2, which we didn't have until it propagated out, but we can show it as a function of C in of 0. So C out of 3 is the generate of 3 to 0 plus the propagate of 3 to 0 times C in of 0. And C in of 0, remember, is ready at time 0. So, um, uh, uh, so that's what we want to do. We want to give a function here in our carry look ahead type of, a, uh, of approach where uh, the function, our, our, our certain carry out stage is always a function of the, the C in 0 and none of the internal C ins. And that's what we did here by kind of making blocks of our carries in, and, and uh, of our propagates and generates um, that help us do that. And uh, really, this is translated basically into what we can see over here. So um, we have these propagate and generate blocks, okay, that are, are two blocks. They take, you know, a, a pair of propagate and generate from two bits, and they create a propagate generate of two bits. Okay, so here we had P0 and G0, P1 and G1, and they output P1 to 0 and G1 to 0. That was exactly what we wrote over here. Okay, and then P3, G3, P2, 3, 2, uh, G2 gave us P3 to 2 and G3 to 2, which is what we wrote over here. And then combining these two together, we get taking these two together and using the same exact propagate generate block, we get this P30, G30, okay? And we can continue doing this. And as you can see here, by using um, these propagate generate blocks, right? We can do an 8-bit uh, adder, right? We can do in three stages of these propagate generate blocks. And three stages is exactly log 2 of 8. So we basically did this with a logarithmic um, uh, dependence on some sort of parameter of the of the size of our, our adder of our n. So our n was eight. We got three stages. Are the propagate and generate exactly the same as uh, whatever our full adder or our mux or whatever we had before? Not necessarily, but still, it is some sort of a logarithmic type of a um, dependence on some sort of a uh, 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 some sort of simple combinatorial block, which makes you know these things up. Okay, um, is that enough? And the, the answer is no, because we got the carry out of each of uh, the, uh, we didn't get all the carry outs here. What we were able to get is the carry out of stage number eight. So in order to get the carry outs of the median stages, like uh, carry out of one, carry out of two, and so forth, which we need in order to XOR with the, uh, the propagate of the stage to get the sum of each of those bits, we actually need to, you know, um, probe some of these internal guys and, uh, and figure out what the, the, the median carry-ins are. And you can see uh, how we do that and get all of the different carry-ins for this 8-bit adder here by, um, by like tapping different areas inside uh, these guys to get the, uh, the, the, the median carries, okay? But in general, we can do it in a very few uh, stages. Okay, and that gives us really an O of uh, a logarithmic O of n. Now, this has been um, really uh, researched uh, to the depth, and many different people have come and derived these different types of uh, of of, uh, of 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 these adders. Okay, there are different types of uh, logarithm of tree adders or of logarithmic uh, carry look ahead adders, and they really are categorized by three things, the radix, the tree depth, and the fan out. So the radix is how many bits are combined in each gate, okay? The tree depth is how many stages of logic to the final carry, okay? And the fan out is the maximum logic branching in the tree. And there's a trade-off here 
which is, you know, a, a higher radix means we have a more complex gate. The tree depth is it means we have more stages until we get to the output. And the fan out means that we have to drive a higher load. So all of those are going to be, we want to reduce all of those, but obviously um, uh, that doesn't uh, work. So we have some sort of trade off of all of these. So an example of this is a Brett Kung tree. So a Brett Kung tree is what we saw uh, before. We take every pair of, um, of bits. And we put it into a propagate generate um, block. We take the next pair, we put it into a propagate generate block, as you can see here. And then we take the outputs of these, put them in a propagate generate block, and look, we got the sum of three, right? We, we got the carry out uh, three, which provides us with the sum of three. In order to get, you know, the, the median guys, this will already give us the sum of one, and we have to tap this in order to get the sum of two. The sum of zero was immediately available. So um, we had this radix two type of a thing, which enabled us to provide, you know, all of these median uh, uh, stages. Since we have 16 bits over here, that wasn't enough. So we have another, you know, each of these pairs, they go into they go in with each other to another one so this is a uh, four uh, bit block so we have these four bit blocks over here we have four of them and they give us these four gates okay then we take these two and put them into another propagate generate and we get this eight bit block you know this uh, propagate and generate from seven to zero and this one is from 15 to eight and that provides us with this. And then to get the total output, we have to do another uh, propagate generate block. So altogether, we went through, you know, one, two, three, four uh, propagate generate blocks, which is log two of 16. And that provides us with the final sum. However, because we have to actually tap this in several places to get the median ones, to get sum of 14, we didn't go through four stages. We went through one, two, three. And then you see that we went through four, five, six in order to get uh, to some number 14. So it wasn't really a, um, a, a, a logarithmic uh, reduction, but it was still pretty fast. And there's not a lot of hardware here. We could have gone to the other extreme where we actually provide for every single pair we do a propagate generate block. So we take these two guys and we stick them into a propagate generate, but then we take the next overlapping pair, we put them into a propagate generate, the next overlapping pair propagate generate, and so forth. So we have a full like we went to the max, we put every propagate generate block we could we could need, and then we can get to every single one of these median bits within our log two setup. So the worst case here is going to be again for the tree depth. It's going to be log two. You know, it's going to be one, two, uh, three, four um, is the worst case. But you see that we have a lot, 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 lot of these uh, propagate generate blocks. So there's a lot more hardware than in the Brent Kung tree. This one is called a Kagi stone tree. It's also Radix too, because we use, you know, um, propagate generate blocks that have two inputs, but it's uh, uh, but it uses a lot, uh, 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 a lot more gates and each gate has a higher fan out. Okay. We have a shorter tree depth. Um, we have the same radix in these two. This has a shorter tree depth. This has a longer tree depth. This has a, a smaller fan out. This has a larger fan out. And this costs a lot more in terms of hardware. Okay, so there are many of these options. You can go through um, books about these and they each have a different name according to, to the uh, researchers who really pushed them and, and, uh, and described them. Um, there are other ways of doing this. For example, not using uh, standard CMOS, using... Um, PTL or pseudo Enmos or all kinds of other types of things. One um, final thing that I wanted to show you, which is a really fast way to implement an adder, is called a Manchester carry chain. Okay, so this is a, a, a real simple scheme, and it's it's interesting. I think you've seen this circuit before. Um, it, it's some sort of a, an interesting XOR type of a circuit, but look at this. It's pretty cool. Okay, so we have these inputs that are called, as you can see, kill, generate, propagate, and carry in. Okay, so the kill, remember that's AI um, bar, uh, AI bar, uh, BI bar, it goes into this guy, and if kill equals one, what happens is, is that carry out is driven to zero. If generate equals, uh, or generate bar equals zero, right, if generate equals one, then carry out is driven to one. So just a single transistor with the, you know, combination of AI and BI, that drive it is going to provide us with uh, with generator kill at the output. Finally, we have a transmission gate, and the transmission gate is uh, controlled by the propagate. So, what does propagate do? It means it propagates the carry in from the input to the output. So, this transmission gate, if it's on, it transmits 
the carry from the input to the output. And that's called a Manchester, um, uh, a Manchester gate. And um, we can actually do that dynamically to make it even faster. So we can add our like pre-charged transistor and evaluate transistor. And then we can reduce uh, the, one of the gates here. And we can do it faster by using a dynamic gate. So we can um, then take this dynamic type gate or the static type gate and we can chain them together and get a really nice chain. So look at this. The whole carry um, path is just through these four transistors we get from the input to the output. And that's a really fast way of propagating our carry. Um, the problem is that we do put these transistors that are serially connected. So they um, raise the resistance of the path. And so you can go and optimize and check what the size of your block is before you want to buffer this. Usually a number of about four gates in a series is something that's uh, kind of accepted. And so a Manchester cherry, uh, carry chain can really provide a fast type of, a, of an adder. You can see here some sort of a, a calculation of the, of the propagation delay and a stick diagram diagram of how you can lay this type of a thing out. So basically, that is what I wanted to show you about fast adders. And next, we'll go on to uh, multipliers. But first, I wanted to go to this week's um, Computer Hall of Fame. And here is one of uh, my favorite types of computers that uh, really, uh, I grew up in the 80s. And in the 80s, um, I didn't have one, but all the cool kids had a Commodore 64. That's what the computer that we had that used to uh, allow us to play games. This was the interface. It was an interface with the, the computer language called BASIC. And uh, when you turn it on, you'd get this type of a thing. It was introduced in December 1982 for $595. Okay, and look at that. A computer that was introduced in 1982 continued selling for 10 years. That's a long time in computer life. Okay, it was an 8-bit computer. It ran at 1 megahertz, had 64 kilobytes of RAM and 65, uh, 16 kilobytes of ROM. Okay, and it ran BASIC, as I mentioned, uh, as its interface. It was the highest-selling single computer model of all time, and it has been compared to the Ford Model T for its role in bringing a new technology to middle-class households um, via creative and affordable mass production. Really, it was considered the computer that provided the foundation for the development of open source software and freeware that we um, live with today. Now, they had a, a really cool and um, uh, innovative campaign of how these guys were sold. Okay, and um, you can see here some of the ads for the Commodore 64 that came out. And it says, if personal computers are for everybody, how come they're priced for nobody? And you can see the prices of an Apple IIe, of a, of a TRS-80, and an IBM PC that were really expensive. And they came out with this big thing. We're going to sell the Commodore 64 for under $600. And that's how it came to every household. But there was another thing that brought it to every household. And that was, as you can see here, it was sold at Toys R Us. Whereas computer um, computers were sold at like uh, Radio Shack and other types of very uh, like uh, technical um, types of uh, electronic stores, they decided that this would be a great gaming machine and to um, really have it sold to kids and so forth. We will sell it at Toys R Us and that will increase the number that we were able to sell. And really they did um, sell it and you can see it, it went really low here to $300 for this computer. And it, it really, that type of a marketing campaign helped it become one of the big successes that uh, a lot of uh, your parents probably grew up on.